bright duty every student matters coming to discuss in the context of albiruni he was born in 973 in khwarezm present day uzbekistan this is the name of the place where he was born well versed in various languages mahmud of ghazni invented khwarezm in 1017 He brought Alberuni to Ghazni. After his invasion, he has brought Alberuni to Ghazni, and Alberuni died there at the age of seventy. After that, this period when he Ghazni was uh, Ghazni has brought him to his own. A uh, Mahmud of Ghazni brought to him in the Ghazni. After that, there onwards he stayed over there for the seventy years of his age. He died. Why and when did Alberoni came to India? As he was from Khwarezm and brought by Ghazni, Mahmud of Ghazni to Ghazni. Then, in the meantime, and he died also at the at Ghazni. But in the meantime, when did he visited India? When Punjab became a part of Ghaznavid Empire, Alberoni came to India. As he has been brought by Mahmud of Ghazni to his land, to his country, and when. our countries the western part which is known as punjab was captured and started ruling by ghaznavid empire at that time alberuni came to india he spent years in the company of brahman priests and scholars learning sanskrit and studying religious and philosophical texts this is only the reason he was well versed in many languages when he came to india he has started getting his company with the brahman priests and the scholars for what purposes to learn sanskrit and to study religious and philosophical text of our country what was alberuni's objective to come to india with what motive what was the purpose why did he visit in india to help those who wanted to discuss religious questions connect the idea to collect the view of the different religions he came to india to learn sanskrit and to discuss about the religion and philosophy of india as a repository to information to those who wanted to associate as a repository means that the collection of works plays the songs the dramas this is the meaning of the as a repository what was that he was collecting the information about that the different types of the works as a collection of works and the plays and the songs of information to those who wanted to associate and he is providing all these informations to them who they wanted to know about that to collect the information so he was learning the different languages and about the facts of the different countries he studied the manners customs and institution of hindus in the 11th and the 12th centuries so not only that he has learned so many things he studied manners etiquettes then the custom of which is in those days it was followed in our country the institution of the hindus during the period of 11th and the 12th centuries the very famous book alberuni's work on kitabul hind it is written in with arabic language its language is simple and lucid very simple language and easy to understand it is written on the subject such as reason philosophy astronomy social life logs etc so it is written on the subject the different subjects has been collected by him and he has written a voluminous text which is divided it is a uh, means the controversy is there in somewhere you may get it is the 40 chapters are there in that the somewhere you can get that the 80 chapters are there so this is all about that so can be considered 40 chapters also can be considered 80 chapters also so what it says that on many subjects such as the religion and philosophy festival astronomy 
alchemy alchemy means that the chemistry then manners customs social life weights and measures iconography laws and the metrology whatever you have the metrological department or the med department everything was been learned by him and he has written these these topics in his book kitabul hind which is actually written in the context of india hind here means that india hindustan each chapters each chapter begins with a question and then description have been given based on sanskrit traditions every chapter begins with a question and then description have been given what is given in the as per the sanskrit traditions and it describe about it describes about the varna system also which was very much very prominent and indian society was divided on this the basis of varna system color of skin the four systems the four varna four and according to varna system it was the four different categories of the people in the country which was also explained by alberuni in his book kitabul hind problems faced by alberuni in writing an account of india alberuni was aware of the problems in understanding an alien world means that for him india was a foreign country so he was aware of the problems he was knowing about that how much problem he may face while trying to understand the foreign country he discussed several barriers that obstructed the understanding of indian society he depended mainly on the works of brahmans vedas purans bhagavad gita the works of patanjali and manu smriti so he has considered mainly the works of brahmans he has considered the vedas the very famous we have the four vedas in the hindu religion hindu religion is having the four vedas rigveda samveda then yajurved atharved these are the four vedas and the very famous vedas of our country which is also that the famous religious book of the india then the purans which has been written by brahmins bhagavad gita the part of a mahabharat works of patanjali these days it is very famous with this baba ramdev patanjali he has a work on the yoga what we are calling it patanjali is the founder of yoga manu smriti manu with from his memory he has written about the entire structure of the society so this is all about the work done by alberuni what were the problems faced by alberuni in writing an account of india these are the barriers what were the barriers the first one is to learn the sanskrit language differences in religious beliefs and practices then self absorption and consequent insularity of the local population these were the problems faced by alberuni while he has started writing account of india in the context of india alberuni's description of caste system this is the what he, what he found about the varna system so the caste variant it was a very much very difficult for him to understand and to explain about the caste system so alberuni tried to explain the caste system by looking for parallels in other societies now he has started comparing it with the other societies he noted that in ancient persia four social categories were recognized now he is comparing it with that the persia four social categories of persia were knights and princes monks fire priests and lawyers physicians astronomers and other scientists peasants and the artisans so he was well versed with this the structure of the society so on the basis of that he has started means uh, correlating and comparing the indian society indian social structure with the foreign countries so what he has described about the caste system 
what he found in India, all men were considered equal in Islam. This is in that the comparison. Men were, the entire men, they were considered equal in Islam. Social divisions were not unique in India, disapproved the notion of pollution, accepted the Brahminical description of the caste system. So, what he found in Persia, all men were equal. According to the Islam religion, there is the difference in the gender. Not in that, the male members are not being categorized like India. We have Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. This concept was not there. That way it was not done. But it was, not, but was very next, what he is telling that it is not unique in India. He disapproved the notion of pollution. Notion of pollution means that what is considered as the untouchables. To view a sight, to get a sight of this, the sudras or the untouchables, creating the pollution of the society, which was disapproved by Alberini. But very next, he has accepted the Brahmanical description of caste system. Caste system, according to that, the poor, that the categories were there. And society was broadly divided into these four categories. Al Baruni's view on caste system in India, he remarked that everything which falls into a state of impurity strives and succeeds in regaining its original condition of purity. The sun cleanses the air, the salt in the sea prevents the water from becoming polluted. He says that the notion of social pollution was against the laws of nature. So nicely he has compared the category which the Brahmins, they have just means excluded them from the mainstream of the society and these, those category of the people, those section of the people were considered as a pollutant, were criticized by al -Biruni. And what logic he put about that? The sun cleanses the air. Then the sea water, the salt present in the sea water prevents the water from becoming polluted. So that, what he says that, the notion of social pollution was against the laws of nature because man is naturally born on the earth. So this is all against that, the, this uh, laws of nature. So he was not able to understand, he was not able to accept it. That one category of the human, one section of the people, they are considered as a pollutant in the society. al description of the caste system was deeply influenced by his study of Sanskrit text. What he read in say, Sanskrit text, textbooks of the Sanskrit, which was... Uh, he was uh, learned along with that the Brahmins and the say, Hindu scholars. After that, he has started giving his description about the caste system. These texts, what the Sanskrit text he learned, he laid down the rules governing the caste system from the point of view of the Brahmins. Already we have discussed in the previous chapters, the Brahmins who they have written the Dharma Sutras and Dharma Sastras. But in real life, the caste system was not rigid. Now again, what he presents that, he, according to him, what he said, that the text, what the Brahmanical text is written with the norms of the caste system, but in the practice, it is, in the real life, it has not been practiced, it is not that much rigid, as it is explained in the Vedas, and it is explained in the Dharma Sutras, Purans, Upanishads, wherever it is. Categories like Antyaza, born outside the system, were expected to provide labor to peasants and jamindars. This is Antyaja, means the last system, Varna system. The last category is Sudras. Brahmins followed by Kshatriyas, then Vaisyas and the Sudras. So Sudras categories were considered as the Antyaja. Antyaja means the last, it's a Sanskrit word, born outside the system were expected to provide labor to peasants and jamindars. 
many a places in the european history it has been written like the serfdom the concept of the slave the same manner it was there in our country also and they were categorized as untouchables they were subjected to social oppression and included in economic activities social oppression was there they were very much very oppressed by that the higher class people but they were included in the economic activities because they were the farm laborers they were working in the construction of the roads building of the houses so they were included in the economic activities but they were excluded from the mainstream of the society so this way alberoni's alberoni what he found how it is practiced in india he has broadly explained in his book kitabul then other thing which is uh, what he is according to his view what he observed in the indian society which was based on that the social and religious conditions these two categories what is that child marriage was prevalent in india in those days widows were not permitted to marry again such things he observed very minutely the practice of sati was very much very popular so this word vogue is been used idol worship was common throughout the land everywhere this this concept of the idol worship was there he appreciated the philosophy given in the upanishads according to uh, alberuni 42 religions were practiced by the people living in india the year when he has visited in our country at that time what he found 42 religious practices were done by the people buddhism was on decline and jainism has lost its purity hinduism was divided into a number of sects and each worship its own gods and goddesses sects means that the vaishnavism saivism then uh, we have that the different sects of the people means in a form of lord krishna in a form of lord vishnu in a form of lord brahma uh, shiva in a form of a linga so these were all the number of sects were there in our country and which was very minutely observed by alberuni in his book while he was writing he was depicting he was collecting the society from the society now we are going to start with the topic marco polo who was he during which year he visited to india what was his purpose what he observed while he was in our country so all such things we are now coming to discuss about marco polo marco polo was a venetian he was from venice italy so it is known as it is said over here venetian traveler it is it is a name of a of a city of a state of italy he was a venetian venice italy traveler who visited south india in 1288 and 1293 this is the time period time duration during this time duration he visited our country he writes about the merchants of south india and explain about the this is tamra parani as great and noble city this is about that according to his observations what he he wrote about that in the context of the merchants of southern india and the city of tamra parani he wrote the parents of malabar as well so what he observed about that he writes the name above agree in their estimate of the general prosperity of the country especially of bengal malabar and gujarat malabar is towards the kerala coast marco polo as well as ibn batuta we are witness of to the flourishing trade at the ports like kayal it is present day calicut cambe and the baroj it is on gujarat coast these merchants came from kis hormas dofar soer etc bringing with them mostly 
horses. What these the merchants they were bringing? They were coming along with the horses, gold, silver, and copper. While they carried back only commodities of herbs and gums, such as paper, ginger, indigo, etc. These were having in plenty in our country and was great in demand in the European country. Kayan was famous for precious pearl trade. The city was and the Tamra Parani, which Marco Polo described as great and noble city. This is this city was only this Tamra Parani was described by this Marco Polo as great and noble city. Cotton was the staple crop and was widely cultivated. Its plants growing to the height of full six paces. The Telangana weavers who find fabrics out of this in south, they look like tissue of spider's weave. This is the way they, these weavers they were weaving the cloth with the help of with this the cotton crop. How this the fine means that the uh, spider's web so fine that the structure of this the cotton was made by the weavers from Andhra Pradesh. Can you imagine about that how nicely these weavers they were having their expertise and why these the cotton cloth and cotton textiles were great in demand in European continent. So this way the spider's waves, it has been compared. The weavers work from India. Then again Marco Polo tells, there is no king nor queen in the world, but might be glad to wear them throughout the world. This was his experience. They, means they feel very comfortable, king or queen, they feel very comfortable after wearing such clothes. Marco Polo writes further that the people have the greatest sheep in the world and great abundance of all the necessities of life. But in Malabar, these parents, they are giving the training to their children, especially the boys, at the age of 13 only. At the age of 13 years, when their son reaches the end, till the 13 years of age, they, these parents they have started giving that some extra knowledge about that the how to do the trade and business to be very dexterous and keen traders these lessons were now started imparting by the parents of malabar the indian merchants of gujarat were the best and most truthful in the world this is the designation given by marco polo to the traders of gujarat about the traders of gujarat the foreign traders found them very kind for the south, jealous at the profit of the foreigner. So, what it is said that the foreign traders found them very kind. Because these the Gujarat, the merchants from Gujarat, they were very kind. So, they have started shouting about that, telling about that jealous, the profit of the foreigner. Never demanding more commission beyond what they were pleased to bestow. So, this was the reason behind it, Marco Polo has praised in his say, accounts the merchants of Gujarat were the best and the most truth, truthful in the in the world the foreign traders found them very kind so now coming to some of the miss recall session to recap the topic with the help of the multiple choice question Al Barami was born in which year? He was born in 973. In which language Kitabul Hind is written? The language used by Al Barini to write his book Kitabul Hind is in Arabic. Where did Marco Polo come from? He was from Venice. It is this is a state of Italy. When did Al Baruni visited India during the during this, which period he has visited India? He has visited India in the period of 1017. This was the year when he visited India. What is the name of the book about India written by Al Baruni? We have to write down the name of the book. So, what was the book? Kitabul Hind.
and the language which was used by al biruni to explain in this book was arabic next question is who was marco polo when did he visited india so marco polo he was from venice he was a venetian traveler what the explanation is given about marco polo he was a venetian traveler he merchant from venice it is a place in italy and he visited india when did he visited india he visited india in 1288 and this is 1293 and the place where he has visited is south india so this is about the recap of the topic